So um, if you go to the roadmap and wiki, you post it to the mouse. Yeah, I'll post mm -hmm. it. So skipping down to point nine three, we've got uh, migration to Git and GitLab done, uh, deciding a unit test framework, continuous build, make C++ 11 compiler a hard requirement, uh, GDK 3 UI revamp and panels fixing, we're doing. What was the panels fixing? Uh, hang on, we're just trying to find it. The panels the dialogue behavior is not consistent, and often is erroneous when you have multiple windows open. Okay, is that all it was? I, I don't know, but that's that's one thing I can think okay. of. Is that still an open issue, and is that something that has to be fixed for nine three? Well, if it hasn't been fixed, it's something we've been suffering through, so it's like no worse. Not a regret, regression. But, okay. But does is, is painful. Also, the XML dialog would often, I think that's been fixed, would often have duplicates of the same elements, which was very annoying. Okay. And I think that was linked to having multiple documents open at the same time. I don't know what the status is. It made the XML dialog hard to use when you had three copies of the same element. Okay, but it doesn't sound like it's a critical thing that has to be fixed for the GGQ3 integration no. to be called done. No, but no. it's something that should be investigated. Sure. Okay, well, maybe I'll break that out as a separate item. Yeah, it's Bump it to point and four. going to the tabs rather than using GDL may fix some of that. Or can you fix it while we're doing that? Do you remember how you did a, a listing of all the known issues? Well, I don't want to commit you to this. It would be nice to have a list of usability glitches like this where the, use, the user interface is really inconsistent that we can mm -hmm. work on as part of the 1.0 migration. But I, I fear that list would be <laughs> rather well. intense. Um, Okay, but for now I'll break it out and I'll move it to point nine four. Mm -hmm. um, we have improved performance, which would be nice, but again, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that's something we could really. Well, I would like to see us tackle it at some time, and maybe now's not the right time after things get moved around a little bit and cleaned up a little bit, it might be better to attack, to attack that. Yeah, it sounds like... If, if you put a random print statement in, mm -hmm. like, well, you put, look, look up there. I just changed a, a selection of a uh, uh, text on the screen, and the same routine has been called like 15 times. Yeah. Why is it doing that? Right. And I, I think that has to do with people adding stuff and not knowing what they're doing because it's so hard to know what you're supposed to do, that it ends up you getting loops and loops of calls back and forth, mm -hmm. signals. Uh, so you really, at some point, just sit down and really figure out what the signaling is and describe it exactly. So that we don't end up, I mean, that's, you know, Inkscape could be a lot faster Yes. If, if we didn't have recursive recursive loops like that, yeah. And 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 I found it any just about anywhere where I put a print statement in, I see that kind of behavior. 
Do we have Do we have any software in C plus plus for doing um, multiple trace tr traceback logging? Because what we do in Python in that situation is we we'd get a traceback log which would create a traceback for every single one of these loops and stick it in a file and then you'd run like an analysis over it so you could see pathways. There is lots of software to do that. Um, some's for C, some's for and it should work for C++. Again, the main thing is just we need a person to... Who's got some experience in it? Well, not even experience, because a lot of the tools are not that complicated. Really it's just a time It's just a time thing, because it's a, a big chunk of time to learn, and then instrument, and then go through and follow up. We, we just had somebody uh, comment uh, about, he, he did do some instrumentation, just a day, ago, a day or so ago. So we might look at what, what he's done and see if we can't get him to look at with, silly things. With Ubuntu, we, um, for the, the boot up time, oh. we, the, what was that called? Uh, Stop. What? Oh, Stop. Oh, no, the, the, yeah, the logging, the, the boot, boot up log. Anyway, we had a, a thing that you, that ran and just captured all the things that happened during the boot. And it would produce this beautiful report and, where you yeah, could see yeah. like, And then you can go through and see where the, the memory load and where the time was spiking and then go and attack on those. And we, we got the boot time for Ubuntu shrunk down a whole lot. And it sounds like that's what we need for the, the conceptual equivalent of that for an escape. Well, we need, to, we need to figure out what's causing these loops. And also, I, I, I always feel like we're copying and pasting pieces of code, as I was telling you earlier yeah, today. Yeah that we, we lack a better understanding of the of the architecture right I, to I, avoid the signaling loops i challenge anyone here to tell me what the architecture is yeah. yeah well we were just talking about that and how since the start of the project there's <coughs> there's not really been any one person that that knew every bit and piece of inkscape i think you know sodi podi i think that was probably done very well i i, I see consistency you know, but since then, people have been adding stuff without really knowing the whole thing. Because it's not documented well. Yeah, there's one kind of task that would be not practical in terms of new features, but would be really useful if someone took the effort to do, which would be to write like a tiny story, like uh, you want to add this feature, you have to update the SP object three, you have to update the XML representation. These are the typical structures you have to deal with. This is the, the typical um, uh, design pattern for adding this kind of inter interaction with the data structures. So this kind of storyline documentation of how adding a feature would typically work could help avoid people messing up yeah. with the code base in the future. I know it's it's boring to write documentation, but I would love to see something like that. And who knows, maybe I do it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but I always feel frightened every time I have to add something, and I, I think perhaps I'm just helping to uh, spread bad practices because I'm not sure I'm doing the correct things. And once I do something that is in the code base, other people might be copying and pasting yeah. things that I did wrongfully, uh, incorrectly. I mean, as, as we've been going through refactoring code, that we know that every single time we do a refactoring, we will break stuff in some way. I mean, I, I picked for the last Hackfest a teeny tiny piece, which was to refactor all the way that we do directories with the resource IO stuff. And that broke tons of things. And you just got to go through fine-tooth comb and take out and refactor and fix. Uh, one example of a design pattern is how do we handle the undo, tracking of undo states, right? That's actually very well done. Yeah, but that's something that people, I, I do it by just copy and pasting code, and I'm not sure I'm doing it correctly, you know? Yeah, basically it's just saving the state of the XML file. And it's just a diff between yeah. the new state and the old state. That's actually very, yeah. it's not obvious what you're doing, but that's essentially what you're doing, and it works pretty well. There are times when people forget to do it, mm -hmm. and so all of a sudden we do the undo, you get an error message, you know, incomplete. 
mm -hmm. on do or something is kind of error message. So it kind of sounds like doing some architecture di uh, documentation or developer stories. Yes. Should be in the roadmap. So I'm adding that so that it is something that we, like, as a group, mm -hmm. put some effort into and make as a priority mm -hmm. for this release. Does that sound? Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. And maybe it's something we can collaborate on and work because it. None of us knows the whole picture, but like if you wrote down what you would do, yeah. and then we can say, oh, you know, that's not the right way to do it. Yeah, you know, we need to change it like this, and we can come up with a cohesive story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That might be a good thing. Yeah, like that. it's boring stuff, but I think it's useful. Right, and it it'll bit rot quickly. Yeah, but at least it'll be something that's use for now. Okay, um, two G on maintenance. Um, so one, so there's a bunch of sub bullets. Stop embedding 2GOM in the Inkscape's code base. Handle it as a regular dependency. Move the project to GitLab, which I, has that been done? Uh, no, but but KK asked me a couple of days ago whether he should do that. So I just haven't replied to him yet. So I'll do it right now. Yeah. I don't know if this needs to be a dependency for 0 because I mean that's. To be done separately. Yeah. Because I don't think we're going to actually be changing anything in 093 because we're moving mm -hmm. to John. Well, it is a release thing because we'll be making yeah. a dependency. We'll, I'll need to do a release of 2G on. Make sure to, when you talk to KK, mention that I, would, I, I will take care of doing a release of that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and then also setting up a PPA for 2GM, which you'd be willing to yeah, do well, that. Yeah, well, I haven't much experience with library PPAs, but like... Um, if you look at the Cairo, what I do with Cairo... Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm happy to, well... And we can bounce ideas around. Yeah. You're stuck on anything. I'm happy to maintain it. I'll have a go at setting it up, but I might need some help from you. Sure, so sure. Do that. Yeah. Okay. So that's 2GM. And, and you're right, it, it isn't really a requirement for, for 0.93, but I think we should leave it here because it's something we can get done. It sounds yeah. like we've got all the people we need to do it. Mm -hmm. And then that gives us more time to stabilize it and make sure that builds and releases and stuff are out in the wild for people. Mm -hmm. um, split out tutorials and other content from the main executable. I know uh, Martin's working on extensions, splitting those out, but I don't know if that's going to be landable in the point nine three no. time frame. So, but we'll make some progress on that. The do documentation, I believe, has been broken out. Didn't Edward break that out? I don't know. Uh, I mean, the, the 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 docs on the Inkscape have been um, heavily modified. Committing to the website to fix that. Okay. Well, maybe I'll be looking for that a little bit more. Um, we have some refactoring stuff here that I'm going to move out, I think, because I don't think they're critical for 1.0. Uh, but if anybody wanted to work on refactoring, I suppose we could let them do that. Um, well, so, sorry, on the, are we on the Saudi party refactoring? Sure, sure. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I could tend to not to do that right away because some of those widgets will just go right. out anyway. And I, I, I think the benefit of doing some of that stuff is just it's not worth it. What I would actually like to see is SP be limited to everything in the object tree. Because then you kind of know that that's the object tree and then we don't need generic SPs everywhere else. Yeah. And, you know, getting rid of some of the widgets, we'll get rid of some. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and then testing. We talked about uh, testing earlier, that we need more tests. Yep. Is that something we should put an effort into? Or 0.93 or 
I think we, we ought to put some more efforts. There are lots of tests that never got converted to the new test framework. And it helps, you know, to catch bugs. Can we, can we make a listing, a, a short list or a medium list of, um, of the tests that need to be converted over and maybe a few low hanging fruit kind of tests that people could work on? Because I might be able to, I mean, we might be able to find people that would be willing to help us with. Well, there's, tests. if you go in. Or we can split them up among ourselves. Test file source. There's a whole directory of CXS test to migrate. So if I, if I. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and it looks like. So if I took that list and maybe added some more ideas and then divide them up. Divide them up among ourselves. Would that be cool? Or do yeah. you think that? I mean, it's also a good opportunity to do invitations. If you can, but then not, mm -hmm. not rely on them. Like we can still do them. So, so. Yeah. And the question is, is well, I guess all, all current tests there do pass. So as long as there's instructions for what to do. Yeah. Do we have that? It's a good opportunity. <laughs> or an example, or one that's been this. ported over yet? Well, there are, we we do have five tests. That are in, they're actually so being run. examples. And I did do, you know, the style test got updated at some point. So, I mean, if we, if we had a GitLab wiki page that said download the Inkscape source, then you um, grab the. Um, make sure that you can run the tests, first of all, that you want them to have. And this is where you find the files, this is what you do to them, this is how you run the tests to make sure that they pass, and this is how you commit. Just like the full, okay. for the job. And eventually, I'd like to. <laughs> the, the rendering tests were very useful when they were, we were actually using them. Because they catch uh, regressions. Mm -hmm. do we, are we not running any tests in our we CI have, builder? We don't do any uh, rendering tests at all. Right. And we had a huge test suite at one time. Is that something that we should have in a separate repository? Well, it's in, it's under tests, the test directory. Oh, so we have it. It's test file is there, it's there, it. but some work's going to have to be done to get running again. Right. Just main maintenance. Maintenance and, and having it run automatically. Every you know, I, I don't think having it run automatically is a hard problem to solve, but in my experience with automated testing, the key thing is to have a person, an actual human, that looks at the results and then finds people and there's regressions. I, I think the, one of the key things is we need to get a situation where none of the tests fail. Or if they do fail, well, that we put aside and if we have to work on these. but. And then notify people if a, a test that was passing is no longer passing. Right. And, that's, um, and that will be need, and whoever checked that in will need to fix it. Yeah. So I, I think we need it. Well, okay. Yeah, I agree. I think having a human do that is, is very beneficial because often what I've seen is that the automated nags get filtered out. You ignore them. Well, we've had situations where, where things have not passed for long periods of time. And you just get used to it, you know. Yeah, and so and you can clean it out. But if we have an actual person, I've had good experiences where there's an actual person watching the test, maybe not even a programmer, but just someone saying, someone who, This is a new error and it looks weird. And it's not the test suite, it's something new. And just post on the mailing list, you know, something. Especially with the rendering test, because if we have a, an image output, like a non technical user can see those results and, and see, Oh, look, this is, this is a rendering book. Yeah, well, like before we the, actually had an automate, automated uh, comparison. You know, we had no, no, no. I mean, so, so like, imagine it's been flagged because it's not. The automatic comparison flags it up. What I'm saying is, like, a normal user can look at that. Somebody who's blessed is like the manager of the rendering tests. And then post them to the mail and be like, look, I'm concerned about this. These, can some, someone help me fix them? Yeah. Okay. Now, with the Cairo, we ha in, in Cairo, we have some. Uh, rendering comparisons that will get false negatives because of 
differences in anti-aliasing or, or font face rendering that's caused by changes in dependencies or other things we don't know about. But the flag is, is errors. And so that's made the test suite a lot less useful because it's full of these false positives and no one's really sure why. So having a human involved in the process to look at it and say, no, that's fine, or yeah, that's legitimate yeah. failure, yeah. helps a lot. Yeah, we, when I was doing uh, graph testing, uh, we tested the rendering of graphs. It actually put a, a, a amount of leeway in so that if it was close enough, yeah, well, you know, actually, you, you know that the SVG specification says rendering is only to a one pixel. And that was because if you couldn't decide what zero, zero should be. Should zero, zero be at the, in, the middle of a pixel or the edge of a pixel? <laughs> so this next one has been there a while, and I'm not sure what the status of it is. New swatch dialog. Oh, God, that's, that's probably really bit rotted code. But, yeah, his project, he had a really nice swatch dialog that would show you patterns. You you know, it showed you what the pattern, what the choices were, what they look like. It showed you what the hatches look like, you know, gradients look like. It was really nice. And I just don't know how much we could salvage from that, but it was a big improvement over. Should I move this to the project list out of the roadmap? So we're not, we're, yeah. we're not committed? Yeah, that right. might be not a bad idea. So why didn't it get moved? I, I, I think things had changed enough. I mean, it, parts parts of his work did get merged. The the, the hatch rendering got merged, and a few other things got merged. But this dialogue, I don't think it merged seemingly, and it just got delayed, delayed. It, it also involved the uh, more deeper code changes. Okay. It wasn't just a dialogue, but there were yeah deeper code changes and. I've always meant to get get it in, but probably now you guys have to look what he did and, and redo it. Yeah, the strategy. But it was nice, you know, to, to see what the patterns look like mm -hmm. and then what the gradients look like, you know. All right. So last item for point nine three, which I do think we should do, is more thorough testing of document recovery after crash. I don't think we do any sort of particular testing of that right now. How do you do it? You well, to, that's the question. You have to deliberately crash Inkscape? There's ways to do synthetic things like that, but, but that is the question. How, how can we improve the testing of this? Because this is ultimately you know, a failure mode. If you don't test recovery of, of failure modes, then... I mean, you should have a code path that causes a crash, mm -hmm. right? Deliberate one where the, you... you you get thrown into a cert. In a test suite, you, you pass it through this thing and it goes bleh. And, uh, yeah. Sounds like an action. <laughs> you want you a, a G action? Crash. 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 Yeah. Come on, we can think of a better name than just crash. <laughs> catch, uh, hold and catch fire. <laughs> um, but what do you guys think? Yeah, but. It's, I have no clue how to, that's how to do it, so. Yeah, but it's also a big topic. How, what, what are we testing? Because, yeah, thorough, but what, what are we want to do? Things can crash different yeah. ways, just having a crash. And a document. What's the document and what's the crash? So the document so is the SVG that it outputs, right? I, I know, but I mean, what's in it? Right, right. What are we wanting to test? So what, once you get a crash, there's a file that is saved. Yeah, I know, I know this. Yeah, 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 but, but I'm, I'm asking, once the user opens Inkscape again, mm -hmm. I think there's no notification. Like, there's something available here to resume from before Inkscape crashed. So that, that would be really awesome to have. Like, there's, there's some files hanging around on your home directory that are recovery files. Yeah, I think it's just we need to be careful about what what we're wanting to test because it's, yeah, we know that a document is produced and we know that that document is readable. But what cases are we actually wanting to consider? All right. Well, if nothing, at least for 
point nine three, maybe we could do some decision making about what the answers to this question should be. Okay. <laughs> um, So then beyond this, we have 0.94 as a new features focus. So it, just real quick, we have multi-page, flip the Y coordinate, flow text. Flow text, uh, I'm hoping will be in my three. Okay. We have C of Y K here. Um, uh, you can, we, already, stuff. we already use C plus plus 11. Yeah. Well, I, this was to, when Alex and I had talked about this before, we, we had like identified some C++11 stuff to yeah. wait for later on, so this is like, there's a later item. Yeah, I mean. Is there anything? I don't think there's anything that we want to use that is we're not using. Okay, yeah. well that's good. Okay, so I can take that item off. Yeah, I mean, there might be some, there might be some obscure features that will be well, we useful. We probably don't use obscure yeah. stuff. C plus plus fourteen. Yeah, <laughs> no. We should, by the way, check that we can build with C plus plus fourteen. Has anybody? No. Okay. So yeah, I mean that should be a that we should probably have mm -hmm. that as an item for. Okay. So flip. We talked about flipping the y coordinate, and we thought pushing that to post one point out. Is that right? Yeah, I think that's so. Okay. okay, and then. Multi-page. Uh, we have a design, but we have no. So that we're also problems. pushing post 1.0. I think so. Yeah. I, okay. I mean, a lot of these, just having a new feature focus just before 1.0, generally that's, sounds like a bad idea. That's what I'm trying to get at. Yeah. So yeah. in fact, I, I would suggest that 9.4 like be, exist. Right? Yeah. 9.4, 9.5. Yeah. It should be. Or 9.5 moving to 9.4. That it should be 1.0. Next, and, and we just push stability all the way. Right. And all features can just wait in the back of the line. Great, right. right. that's that's what I was, I was getting at. So, yeah, so if we do a 9, 0.9 for, and I do think we should, that it should be a really trivial release where we don't really do much. You know, it's just like, mm -hmm. you know, like our last pre release before release yeah. where we don't really change anything after that. We just have it out for like a, another round of testing to make sure. I mean, I, I would just do cool. I would just do one one point oh pre releases instead. So instead of doing nine four, we could call it that. We'll do it because I don't think even when we do nine three in the releases app, I'm not going to post it as a like a full, fully functioning stable release. Right? I'm going to post it as a pre release effectively. Because otherwise, every, all the downloads will go to nine three, and we'll have it. We'll have everybody using it. I don't think that's the intention. That's right. Okay. Well, we can we can decide naming stuff. But so a lot of the stuff for 0.94 will move down to post 1.0. We'll make if we have a 0.94, it'll be kind of a pre-releasey kind of thing. I, you know what? Now that I'm starting to think about this, like how we're doing, how we're going about this, I'm, I'm wondering if we should just um, start start being serious about doing pre-releases for 1.0 now. And just get ourselves committed to to doing it, so that you know maybe it's like uh, we'll, we spread out the pre pre release site cycle so it takes us a year, uh -huh. right? And we get the community into the mood of installing the pre release versions. We have them available on the website. We still do the Windows builds. We still do the Mac builds and so on. But they're not they're not zero point nine three. They don't follow the same pattern as the rest. So people don't expect them to be stable. Um, and then also we you know. Uh, because they're available for all the plat platforms the same that, like they usually do, uh, people can test test them. I still think we should push like nine three to um, Ubuntu and places like that. But the, the, the feedback that we get from users on those plat platforms is still very useful. Um, but maybe maybe offer a flat packs or something instead, so that, um, that they have an alternative and go back to nine two. Okay. I don't care what we call it. What do you guys think? Like switching from instead of we, calling it 0.94, we call it 1.0 pre well, zero. Extending this even further, is 0.93 going to have anything different from 0.94 or 1.0? It's not 0.93, not just a, an alpha alpha that's, pre release. That's what I'm saying to So no 0 0.93 release. No, no, no 0 0.93. So because, it's just because, straight from. Because I worry that it, because we're using the same version patterning. 
we're essentially inviting users to make a conclusion that we have a state stable, stable root release. And we've already decided that we don't. Yeah. That's a good point. I've been worried about that. And if, uh, so do we just move straight from 0.92.x straight on to 1.030? Yeah. That's what he's proposing. Yeah. yeah. I think I, I quite like that idea because it will discourage people from if we can basically say right now that 1.0 is in feature freeze and that freeze will last for a year and that this whole period is going to take us from something that will run but has lots of usability glitches and may well have things under the hood that people don't really expect. Yeah. And over the next year we'll focus entirely on stabilising that. Any new features going to a branch We'll merge that in as 1.1. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, the only thing that I would think about is Google Source and Code. Do we have any? Issue? No, not this year. Yeah, we're free. We're home free. We don't have to have any features. Okay. All right. Well, I'll write up. I'll, I'll, I'll take this and I'll write it up as a proposal. Put it out and we'll let's get some more feedback. Okay. But it works for me. Yeah. All right. And so then that gets us to 1.0. And then after that, it's fun. All these ideas we can start working on. Can we start with 2.0? Let's just. There'll never be a 2.0. <laughs> just to, because we've been in pre 1.0 for so long, let's just yes. make up for it and just jump to 7. <laughs> Inkscape 42. Inkscape 7 is Version coming out. 2019. <laughs> right? There you go, Ted. Okay. Great. Thank you.